Hi, we're going to look today at some demo code um, to help better understand the, the bootstrap for grid system. And I've got some notes here. This is what we want to look at, the grid system itself, and how it allows us to horizontally align block elements, like divs, uh, provide proportional widths, uh, have mobile-first responsive layouts, um, the original grid system is based on 12 items per row and was implemented with float, but now in Bootstrap 4 we're using Flexbox. And Flexbox will allow us to automatically give items the same width if you don't supply a number on the call class. So we're going to look at that. And Bootstrap 4 CSS, uh, we're going to look at that to see how that's done. And it is all done using media queries. So we will start with uh, building a background that helps us better understand how media queries affect responsiveness. And we'll be looking then at 12 items, first four across, three across, two across, and one across as we change the size of the viewport. All right, so let's go look at how this will work. I've got a code pen here, Bootstrap Grid System Demo. And if you look at my settings, CSS, I have added the CDN for Bootstrap 4. And it's still in beta as of this, but we'll be using Bootstrap 4 in this class. So the first thing I want to do, I've got my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We won't be using JavaScript. Uh, and here's where my, uh, my uh, rendering will display in the bottom. So the first thing I want to do is set up my background to use different colors. And so I'm going to do that using media queries. And I'll use the min width, which is what Bootstrap uses to do its media queries for the grid system. And we'll start with 320 pixels. Um, and we'll do a couple of things here. We'll set the body color, background color, color to be let's say light gray. So our smallest viewport will use a light gray background color. Now let's just go ahead and label this so that we know how this is referred to in Bootstrap. This is the extra small is what's going to map to the 320. And now let's go ahead and just replicate this for all of our sizes. So let's go here. So we've got the the extra small, the small, which takes us to the 576 pixels. And we'll make that light salmon. And by using colors, we'll be, we should be able to visualize what's going on easier as we change the viewport sizes. 768, this is our medium. And we usually think of this as a tablet. And we'll make this one light blue. And then we're going to use 992 as our large. And that will be light green. And then one more for our extra large. We'll make that plum. Okay, and you can see those colors changed on. I'm at the largest setting now on my laptop. And so plum is the color at our extra large, which is the largest setting. And I'll save this. And then just to show you how this looks when we change the size of the viewport, and I'll do this just by adjusting screen width. So at the, let's start at the large. You can see as this goes through, we at the largest we're at plum. And oh, I can see I made a mistake here. We have 1992, and actually the extra large is going to be 1200. So as we shrink, we go to light green when we get to 1990, when we get to 992, and then we go down to light blue, and then we go to the light salmon, and finally we get to the gray, which takes us all the way to the smallest. So that's one way to visualize what's going on here. 
Um, the other thing I'm going to do to make it even clearer is I'm going to add a div that I'm going to ID as width val, which will be the actual, I will use CSS to post the value of the width at these different breakpoints. And I'll do that by setting content, let's see, I'll say uh, hash width val and I will say with val and I will say uh, actually I'll put this before with val before and I will make it content um, and I'll just make the content equal to the value of the width so at this point you can see that popped up the 320, but I want this to vary at each of my media breakpoints, media query breakpoints. So we've got 576. And so here I'm just using media query to set background color, and I'm also using it to set content. And I'm just going to get this all labeled because I think this will help as we introduce the bootstrap to our setup. So, okay, so again, if we allow our viewport to change size, we'll see the, the color change as well as the content. All right, so that takes care of setting up our background and our labeling of the size. All right, now we have our background set up. We've got Bootstrap loaded through our settings, so we're going to start using Bootstrap. And the first thing we're going to do is work on a container. So I'm going to set up a div where the class is container. Now Bootstrap provides this container class, and there, this is a class that you would not want to um, nest in your code. This is not a nestable class. You would have, you can have multiple containers on your page, but you don't want to nest containers. And to make this a little more visible, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to add a background color for container. And I will make that how about light yellow. And of course, there's nothing in the container yet, so let's add something. And the first thing I think I'll do is to add a header. And we'll call this traditional, because we're going to start with some classes that we might have used in a traditional, uh, like Bootstrap 2, Bootstrap 3 layout. All right, so what do we see here? We have um, a header inside of the container, and we see that this container is not taking up the full width of the page. And that is because the container is, it is designed to leave sort of a gutter or margin um, on the sides of the page. And it does this by using a fixed width uh, in conjunction with media query. So no matter how small you get, no matter how, what changes you go through in your viewport, you'll, you'll always have that uh, area on the right and the left. Now there is another um, class su su uh, supplied by Bootstrap called Container Fluid. And Container Fluid is similar to Container. You're going to use it to contain other Bootstrap um, items, but Container Fluid is a full width. So if I put container fluid in here, um, we should see that there is no margin gap gutter um, on this uh, layout now. So this is a choice you make if you want the contents of your container to span the entire width of the page, or if you want to provide a bit of margin, which is 
generally uh, kind of nice to have, easy on the eyes, easy for easier for reading if you're not having your text span the full length of the page. However, sometimes you do want the full length and that's why you get this container fluid. All right, so that's how we set up the container. All right, let's look into setting up our grid. Uh, the first thing I want to do is add a style for the divs that will give it a border so it'll make it easier to see the grid. So let's do one pixel solid black. Okay, now to, to get the grid going inside of our container under our H1 we're going to add a div with a class equal row. Row is a bootstrap class that indicates the container for the columns. And the way the columns work is they get entered as a div container. And let's just name these, we'll set the contents in a way that helps us to recognize which column they represent. So uh, let's just say I'm going to start with four columns. And uh, I will make it clearer as we go where I'm, what requirements I'm trying to fulfill. But you can see as I add these columns, they just kind of nest right next to each other, like so. And in the bootstrap uh, world, there are 12 uh, possible cells in a row. So when I when I hit my 12 um, cells, the next thing that happens is that I would wrap around. So let's fill out 12 cells here just to get this going. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And this comes from the ad observation a while back in the world of HTML that most viewports at that time were about 960 pixels. And so if you wanted to divide that up evenly, you could divide by 12. And, and it just that kind of set up the mode for how to view a, a nice even layout. But what you can see here is we're just um, setting these and we have not provided any classes to our calls. So they're just kind of stacking themselves in there. Um, without trying to take up the full space or fill up the 12 sections. So in order to start getting them into the bootstrap mode, we need to give them classes. And we'll start out with just a call SM2. Um, actually, we're going to do call SM6. And it will become clearer why we've chosen that as we go. So let's let's give them all the same dimensions here. So, and I think as I do this, what you should start seeing is that as soon as these uh, as soon as these get to filling up 12, in other words, 6 plus 6, we wrap, and so that's that is what how you want to visualize this. Let's just grab this. And get this pasted in here so that we have all of our divs set with the same column size. And so what we're seeing is basically what looks like six rows in our grid, each a row made up of two columns. And what we've done, how we've done that is this number six, every time we get add up to 12, we wrap to a new row. And then how, and then the SM tells us that this will be the case for viewports that are greater than or equal to the SM threshold, which we've seen over when we did our coloring as at 576. 
So what that means is that as long as we are greater than small, we will keep two columns. But as soon as we go to extra small, we'll go to our mobile first view, which is everything is just stacked on top of each other in a single column. So right now, we have just set it up for one threshold. Now, where I like to go with this is that as my viewport gets bigger, I want to have more columns so that I can, since I have a wider viewport, I can cram more things into a single row. And to, so to do that, I am going to say that right now, so at my small, I'm going to have two columns. I'm going to say that at my medium, I want to have three columns, which means I need to wrap at, at, I need to have them proportionally take up a third of 12, which is four. And then at my large size, I'm going to give them the dash three, which says that three into 12, that at my large size, I'm going to have four columns. Now, I think it can be a little confusing when you say, okay, I've entered four, and that means three columns. But keep in mind that that means that I wrap, uh, that I divide that four into 12, and I wrap after that number. So 12 divided by four is three, so I'm going to wrap after three columns. 12 divided by three is four, so I'm going to wrap after four columns. 12 divided by 6 is 2, so I'm going to wrap after two columns. So once you understand that, that ratio that, that they've set up, I think it starts to make more sense. So let's fill these all in, and then we'll test our responsiveness to see if we're getting what our requirements called for. And so we've got that. All right, so we do have four columns here at the extra large size. So what happens as we change sizes? As we move into the large, we still have four columns, which is what we want. And then as we go to medium, we go to three columns. And as we keep going, when we move into the small, we're at two columns. And then when we get down to this one, or that to the extra small, we're at the one column. So that's how these proportions work. You take, you, you, you know that there are 12 possible items per row before it wraps. And you divide this number into 12, and that tells you how many items you'll see before you get the wrapping. So I hope that that helps you to understand. And this again is the traditional bootstrap um, method of providing proportions and setting up the number of items that you see in a row. Let's mention something about this H1 traditional that's in the container. Now I want that traditional to always take up 12 uh, spaces, 12 cells, no matter what size my viewport is. And actually, just by specifying H1 traditional like that, it will. It doesn't, it will always be taking up the full row of the grid. Um, another way that I could do that if I wanted to put this inside of my actual row, but guarantee that it always took up 12 spaces, would be to assign it a class equal to call 12, I'm sorry, call extra large 12. And the reason why that will always take up, you know, it will have the same effect as being outside the row is because since I've given it extra large 12, it means that for any size, it will, you know, of course, mobile first, it will always want to take up the full row and just have things stack on top of each other. By, by setting the threshold extra large, it means that no matter how big I get, I'm always going to demand that I get 12 cells for this, this um, class. So this could, this could be done inside the row as long as I set up this call extra large 12. But I could also leave it outside the row as I had done previously. All right.
All right, now I want to show you what's been introduced in Bootstrap 4 with, with the use of the flex box layout. And let's label this one, uh, well, let's, let's create a new row and I'll put this on top of our traditional. And we can, we could either stick our H1 inside the row or we can leave it outside the row. It'll, if it's outside the row, it will behave properly. So we'll call this bootstrap or with flex. Just to see what the difference is. So, so with flex, bootstrap doesn't require us to enter a proportion. It will automatically space out the items in our um, row um, in order to fill the row. It will divide it up evenly. So if I create um, some divs, let's say I call it um, R1 and let's create four of these. Okay, what and we're going to have our three. and R4. Okay, so we've got a row with four items in it. And you can see that right now they're all just jammed up against each other. Um, they are side by side, but they are not working themselves out evenly. But what Bootstrap allows us to do is we can add classes to these that don't give a number but just a threshold and so what's happening now is with this you can see this one is, has pushed these all over to the side but if I want to get them to all lay out proportionally I can just add that to each one of these divs and now I don't have to give it a number to indicate that I want it to take up four. Basically, I'm just saying just spread these out evenly across my row. Okay, and um, there's no sort of thought of dividing by 12 with this. We just say, um, look, if I add another item to this, it means that I want to, to have them each take up proportionately less. So right now it, it just gives them equal um, amount of width across the entire row. However, if I do want one of them to be a little bigger, let's say I want R3 to be a little bigger, I can actually add a dimension to that. And it's not very visible. Let's take it up to six. And what that says is give R3 six twelfths of that row and spread the other items, the other cells out equally with what's left. So this is just one of the things that, that you get with the new uh, bootstrap with flex. And it allows you to not have to think about that number being applied. You don't have to apply the number like you did in previous versions of bootstrap. You can think more about just creating maybe separate rows. So if I if I just were to copy that row, I could just have another row. And I'm not thinking about wrapping rows around like I was before. I'm just thinking about letting each row be spaced um, evenly. So let's say I just give these all a different number so you can see the difference. So instead of dealing with row wrapping and a number to determine when to wrap, I just put these in separate rows and then provide and then let bootstrap space them out evenly across the rows. And so you're getting kind of some responsiveness out of Flexbox. Now I do have to supply this medium because what I this just gets back to the responsive first is that I need a threshold at which I'm going to go from this kind of uh, laying uh, 
items out horizontally to just stacking them on top of each other, which is the mobile first a way of doing it. So now as I get smaller, when I get below that medium threshold, they should all just stack on top of each other. And there they go. So now at that point, my rows no longer try to spread themselves out across the horizontal viewport, but rather just stack on top of each other. So you can make that decision, you know, when the stacking occurs uh, through this threshold. So let's say I change all of these to large. So now I'm making the threshold a little bit bigger on this top row, which means that it's going to go to the vertical stacking a little sooner for that row. So let's see how that works. We will see. There, that one has gone to the vertical stacking and that one is still horizontal. And that's just because I gave it a different threshold. So that is the bootstrap four with flex way of, of laying out. And here I'm just laying out simple strings, R1, R2, R3. These could be photographs. These could be chunks, sections, you know, whatever you might want to lay out. All right. Well, I hope that this helps you to better understand using bootstrap and setting up the grid system for a responsive layout.